Good morning. How are we all doing this morning? Um, I've got a bit of an issue at this end. Um, after showing off my stream deck yesterday, it's gone on the blink today. So uh, I will be typing my answers to you, all your uh, good mornings uh, a bit later in the show. And it's also going to make me uh, struggle to do the question of the day. But we will soldier on. I'm going to say a very quick good morning to uh, our friend Ahmed. Uh, thank you for being here. Nick Drew's here as well. And uh, Mark Whiting is here as well. So bearing in mind the uh, technical limitations that I have at my disposal today, uh, let me roll the intro and try to post a question of the day. Welcome to The Great Flash Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It is Friday, Friday, the 18th of November. And as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. And as if the uh, day wasn't bad enough, I've just heard that the LinkedIn link is down as well. So it's all going remarkably well. Uh, I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, uh, did we leap before we looked at HVO Fuel? Balfour Beatty and the Environment, Environment Agency certainly think so. Uh, Yanmar shows off its new family of compact ducks. We bring you the best view for, of Balmer from the cab of the PC4000E electric mining excavator. And speaking of cabs, BOMAG is showing off its new workstation. Plus, we're off to Norway for some truly epic recycling. And we'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! Just trying to fix the uh, LinkedIn link and it doesn't seem to be working at all. So uh, if you are one of those, well, I don't even know why I'm apologising. <laughs> if I'm not broadca broadcasting on LinkedIn, you probably wouldn't know about it anyway. It is a many happy returns to the uh, survey enthusiast who gave his name to the Gallup poll. George Gallup, and to the first American in space, apparently, uh, astronaut Alan Shepard. Happy birthday also to Handmaid's Tale author Margaret Atwood, Barbarella actor David Hemmings, dynasty actress Linda Evans, and to St. Elmo's Fire singer John Parr. To 80s singer Kim Wilde, Doctor Who writer Stephen Moffat, goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel, and to actor Owen Wilson. But far more importantly, a very happy birthday to the comic book writer responsible for masterpieces including V for Vendetta and Watchmen, Mr. Alan Moore. Many happy returns to them, one and all. <laughs> It is less than a week since I published an article highlighting how the environmental lobby had adopted a by any means necessary approach to carbon reduction. How the world had set sail towards a sustainable future without checking the likely travel conditions. How the road to zero seemed purely as a destination with little or no consideration given to the actual route or the journey. And here we are less than seven days later and the industry appears to have hit a significant pothole on the road to zero. Hydro-treated vegetable oil. Hydro-treated vegetable oil, or HVO as it's known, was widely heralded as the ideal stepping stone, an almost carbon-neutral stopgap that would suffice until electricity or hydrogen fueled machines became a viable alternative. HBO, uh, HVO, should I say, uh, HVO certainly appeared to have all the right credentials. It's 90% carbon neutral, and producers say that it reduces nitrogen oxide emissions by up to 30%, and particulates by up to 85%. It's also biodegradable. Construction and demolition companies and plant hire firms were quick to spot the potential. Just over a year ago, the National Federation of Demolition Contractors urged its members to switch to HVO. But now comes the news that two significant organisations have come out against the use of HVO. The first is Balfour Beatty. Now, Balfour Beatty is not notoriously contrarian. Tell Balfour Beatty that the sky is blue and they will try to convince you that it is, in fact, green. Even so, it will unquestionably set alarm bells ringing when the UK's biggest construction company says publicly that Balfour Beatty does not directly purchase HVO fuel for our sites and will expect our supply chain to support our policy position when working for Balfour Beatty. The company goes on to say, we are working with our supply chain partners to keep HVO use when operating plant and fleet on our sites to an absolute minimum. 
For example, while some plant may arrive from other sites with tanks part full of HVO, once used up, we expect them not to fill with their plant with HVO whilst on a Belfer BT site. Now, as I said before, Belfer BT has something of a track record for rowing its own canoe, as Build UK found recently to its considerable cost. The second organisation to drop a fly into the HVO ointment is rather harder to ignore. The Environment Agency, you know, the public body charged with protecting the environment, has banned the use of HVO on its sites since September. Much of the concern from both Balfour BT and the Environment Agency seems to stem from the categorisation of HVO. HVO is made from used cooking oil, or UCO, because nothing scientific really counts without an acronym. And many in construction circles have been led to believe that HVO was, in fact, a way in which to repurpose a waste product. That, apparently, is not the case. UCO has been used for years in the production of animal feed, and there are now fears that diverting UCO into the production of HVO will mean that animal, animal feed manufacturers will have to find a new and potentially unsustainable substitute. Hope you're keeping up with all of this. Uh, according to Joe Gilroy, Balfour Beatty's Group Sustainability Director, it is simply a matter of due diligence. We're very good at jumping on solutions and thinking they're the answer to our problems, aren't we, she says. We look for easy wins and HVO will look like that. But any one-hit wonder solution needs to be examined carefully. You always have to do your due diligence. Now, as I said last week, the industry, society, and the world is rightly focused upon the need for carbon neutral, uh, a carbon neutral outcome. So, so much so that it is probably not given sufficient thought to the journey from here to there. Or, or as David Taylor at the Construction Index very nicely puts it. Your path towards net zero is more likely to lead you into a maze than it is to take you straight from A to B. Now, if you'd like to know more, I'm going to try and post a link in the chat. Although, as I say, my stream deck is, is playing silly buggers the, uh, at the moment. But I will try desperately hard to do that. But in the meantime, let me play you this. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Okay, it looks like that link actually went up, so maybe the stream deck is not a complete write-off today. Um, but I'm, I'm, if, if I haven't already said hello to you um, in the chat, don't worry, I have seen you. I'll come back to you at the end of the show and, and do things more more officially let's say okay people uh, get ready to duck uh, yanmar has some new wheeled excavators that it would like to show off <laughs>
smart. Very smart indeed. I have to say, I was mightily impressed by the Yamal display at Balmer, which is kind of a clumsy way to say that we're headed back to Balmer right after this. It is time once again to head back down Bavaria Way as we continue to reminisce about our mem- uh, our Mesa München memories. <laughs> There were many memorable parts to our trip to Bauma 2022. Hanging out with the team at Lieber and seeing their latest kit, chatting to the likes of Senabogen, Bobcat, Hyundai, Kabelko, Wackenhuisen, and everyone else. Sharing a house with my son and my construction collective colleagues, Messrs. Haddock and Drew. But in all senses of the phrase, getting to go on board the Komatsu PC 4000E electric mining truck was a real high point. <laughs> of stairs just to get to the cab it really is that big a massive thank you to the team at Komatsu Europe particularly David Billion for making that possible I think you'll agree that was an impressive cab and we'll be back with an almost as impressive cab right after this since the finance bill came into effect in April the construction industry has seen a surge of fuel thefts the rising cost of living has placed an additional risk of theft by employees and contractors as well as opportunistic thieves By using diesel dye and placing warnings of its use, you are sending a clear message that this is your fuel. Just discovered that um, LinkedIn is now playing ball, which is nice to hear. Uh, If anybody has been struggling over on LinkedIn, it wasn't you, it was me or more specifically it was my system now maybe it's just me but when i think of compaction equipment i think of slow moving items of equipment that lack a certain degree of sex appeal well that may have been the case in the past but it's clearly time for me to have a rethink just take a look at the working environment on the latest bowmeg machines
Now that is a gorgeous place to work. I realise that rollers are still painfully slow, but man alive, the journey would be lovely, wouldn't it? There are recycling projects, and then there are recycling projects. And as is often the case, those, sca those canny Scandinavians are showing the way. A short last journey for the Kölöv FPSO will now be safely set down on the quay and uh, for further dismantling and recycling. FPSO was an uh, offshore production uh, vessel that uh, operated in the North Sea for over 20 years. After uh, over two years of preparations, engineering and planning, we are finally ready to bring in Curly FPSO to its final resting place. For this operation we have used a total of four tugs and two line vessels to initially unmoor Curly and uh, towing it out into the float over position and uh, positioning it above the heavy lift vessel before the lift. The special thing about this project is the size of everything. We have the Coast Coast XGH, which is the second largest heavy transport vessel in the world. And the operation we're doing now, the load-in, is a record-breaking. Um, it has never been used that many SPMT axles at one time. It's 748 axles transporting this uh, 20,000 tons uh, ship, the Curlew, onshore. Um, the combination of all axles is also record-breaking, so uh, yeah, it's really great to, to be a part of this. One of the most critical parts of the operation is that the vessel deflects when you both lift it and when we drive it. So we've had to take that into consideration by using shimming to make sure that we're able to account for this movement. Now as the vessel is uh, safe placed uh, ashore uh, on our production uh, plate, uh, we will now start uh, removing uh, uh, waste uh, things that has to go um, away from the circle and brought out of the circle. Uh, we also have to clean the cargo oil tanks uh, and uh, we will make it ready for machine demolition. On a project like this, we can reuse or recycle more than 95% of the materials. The operation is a real achievement for the team at VATS, a real success, a real milestone, uh, a great collaboration from everybody involved. Yeah, I think it's interesting that all of the talk today has been on the decommissioning and demolition of the rigs themselves. As that film shows, there's a lot more to the oil and gas cleanup than just the rigs. Fantastic job by AF Gruppen or AFDCOM as we used to know. Okay, it's the end of the week, so I'd just like to remind you of a couple of key things that are coming up very, very soon. On Wednesday, the 23rd of November, we will be hosting our latest and our biggest ever giveaway show, 7pm in the evening on Wednesday, the 23rd of November. Up for grabs is the following. A Brock goodie box, a Liebherr goodie bag, an MB Crusher goodie box, Volvo goodie bag, a Cymex model and a hat, a Prinoff model, an XCMG model, a Volvo EC220E model, a Digger Guard hat, a DeHarco hat and tape measure, a steel wrist hat, and a Wacker Neusen hat to keep your noggin warm during the winter as well. <clears throat> There will be no difficult questions, no forms to fill in, no subscriptions required. To be in with a chance to win one or more of those prizes, we will just need you to be there on the night and to enter the right word or words in the chat, and we will do the rest. There is a dozen prizes up for grabs, so hopefully plenty of you will leave with a prize. But even if you don't, fear not.
Yeah, exactly. One uh, one week after our big giveaway show, we will be hosting the world premiere of the first of two new demolition films from The Mighty Caterpillar. And Caterpillar is planning to send us some branded giveaways for the show too. So you can tune in for the demolition, but you can stick around for the branded merch as well. So 23rd of September, 7pm for the giveaway show. Um, 7 p.m. 30th of November for the Caterpillar World Premiere. Be there or be square. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or, better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that pretty much wraps up the main part of this morning's show. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. If you can't stick around for that, then please stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. Have a great day, have a great weekend, and thanks for watching. But if you do have the time and the inclination, I'll see you on the other side of this. Hey.